Hey everybody, I had a request for a simple beginner's Adobe Photoshop tutorial. thought a great way to do this would be to make like a dinosaur crossing sign and focus on the layout, focus on the shapes, and focus on text and how to save a document. Let's get started. On the upper left hand corner here we'll click new file and first thing I like to do this is going to be 500 pixels by 500 pixels uh, the first thing I would recommend doing is on this little new document screen select your units of measurement first like if I'm on inches here like let's say it's on inches and I wasn't paying attention and I go 500 by 500 which is a real big graphic it's probably gonna freeze some things up and I'm like, oh man, I wanted pixels. So if I go over here and switch that to pixels, it automatically scales those numbers uh, to what it would be in pixels instead of just keeping the original numbers there. Sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. That's why I recommend check your units of measurement first and then type in the values for the width and height. Uh, this is a digital product we're going to be making, a digital sign. It's nothing I'm going to be printing out. In that case, I'll leave resolution as 72 pixels per inch. If it's something you're going to be printing, depending on the printer settings and what your printer is capable of, maybe that's going to be 300 or more. But for this, 72. And then for the color mode, I'm leaving this at RGB color and 8-bit. Um, you, that's a whole other video on its own kind of explaining in the different color modes and, and those things so maybe a future video possibility right there uh, I think we're good with this 500 pixels by 500 pixels I'll click create here's my canvas control plus zooms in control pl minus zooms out and on the left hand side we have our tools on the right hand side we have our different panels and if you are in your window area up at the very top and you go to workspace and I'm on essentials which is the default if yours ever gets all goofed up and you're missing something that used to be there you can go up to workspace and then go down to reset essentials and it'll reset the layout of your window there back to how it was when you first opened it up sometimes very useful all right, on the left hand side, we have shapes and all these other tools. I'll begin with the rectangle tool. Now, if I click and drag here, you know, you can make a rectangle or a square. If I hold shift while I'm dragging, it keeps it scaled, which is a useful thing. So in this case, I want to make a square. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to let go of the mouse now. And I have this color filled in. Now, your edges or your corners of your shape may not be rounded on default. Uh, over here in the properties panel on the right hand side and it may be hidden you may have to click and drag to open up this panel a little bit bigger some of the features are hidden. Um, you can change the roundness of those corners. I kinda like 10 pixels so I'm gonna leave it that way if you want it to be a perfect corner then you would just select that and then type in whatever number you want zero if you want perfect square you know but I don't mind those round edges here for this case I think that'll work fine and that looks good uh, next thing that I want to keep in mind is each time I select or create a shape a shape has two main properties that I kind of focus on one of them is the fill one of them is the stroke all right, so in this case here for the fill, I'll look here and click on this and then there's these, you can have your color swatches here. Uh, there are also available ones in these little folders that you can select. You can also uh, click this rainbowy gradient rectangle here and then you can choose whatever color you want. Over here, you have all the colors available I'm gonna go kind of to the gold here and then you have all the saturated to desaturated to the bright to the non bright variations of that particular color 
All right, this one here I'm going to select uh, just because I think a yellow sign will look good. Uh, the hex value, if you're trying to make yours exactly like mine, is FFC600. Uh, once I have that color selected, I'll click OK. And you can see now it makes that shape look like that, you know. Um, next thing I'll do here is uh, over here where it says stroke. Uh, I can click on this and the same it works the same way. Uh, the stroke though is like the outline of the shape. So I'm going to select a black color for this and here I can change the width of this um, you know to make it however wide that you want it to be. I'm going to see what 10 looks like. Doesn't look horrible. Um, I think that'll work for this here. I can always change it later. Uh, to the side here, you can change if you want it to be a dashed line or a dotted line. Um, you can also, uh, here in this area, you can choose if you want that stroke to be on the outside of the shape, on the middle of the shape, or on the inside. On this particular one, I'm just going to click, and I want it on the line, so that way it's kind of curved on the inside and on the outside. I think that'll work nicely. Uh, the next thing I can do is I want this sign to actually be uh, kind of on an angle. So to do that, using Control T on my keyboard with this rectangle one layer selected, so it's it's highlighted there, and then Control T um, allows me to resize this if I ever want to. Uh, I can move it around if I want to. Uh, I can also rotate it. You can see where the cursor is here on the edge and it's not really overlapping the shape. It turns to that angled curved two arrow icon. I can click and drag and rotate this item. If I hold shift while I do that, it does it by like more standard angles. So here it's like 45 degree angle. That's exactly what I want. So that looks good. Once you have that object, um, the size you want it, and and this time when I resize with the Control T, I don't have to hold Shift to keep it scaled. It's kind of a weird thing about Photoshop. Sometimes you hold Shift, sometimes you don't. Shift happens, right? So once you get that where you want it, then you have to press Enter to place it. Looks good. Uh, last thing that I will do with this will go into this rectangle layer style. By moving my cursor, I'm not going to double click here or right here. It's kind of like Dumb and Dumber. Not so much here or here, but right here is where I want my cursor. I'll double click and it's going to open up this layer style. Uh, in here, I can, I can change a whole bunch of different settings. There's a bunch of things I could play with. One of them I want to do here is I want to actually add another stroke around the outside of this object. So if you click on it, you don't get the options if you just click the check mark. If you click on the actual word stroke, then you can actually change some of these things. So uh, one of the things here I'll do first, I'll change the color. So I'll click here in the little color area. And if I move my cursor over this area here and I click, you'll notice it's got that eyedropper tool. It's going to match that color exactly. And I'm going to press OK. And the position of this one, I'll say outside. And for the size, doesn't really matter. You know, it could be five or so. I just want it to where it's like those street signs where the black isn't on the edge of the sign. There's, you know, a little bit of a border around that outside. So size in this case I have is 5. You may change yours depending on the size of your sign. The position is on the outside. Blend mode's normal. Opacity is 100%. And I will then click OK. Alright, this is coming along very nicely. Starting to look like a sign now. Next thing we need is a dinosaur. So to do that, we go over here and we need to go to Custom Shape tool. All right. Once you do that, it looks like this little blob and I just clicked and held on to this shape over here and then there is that custom shape tool there. At the top, 
you'll see where we have these shapes. Now, yours may not have all the necessary shapes that you need available to you at the moment. Like you might be missing this whole legacy shapes and more. So if that is the case, uh, you can go to window and then find where it says shapes. Click on that. It opens up on the far right hand side. And there's this little hamburger menu here. You click on that and you can go to a uh, legacy shapes and more. When you click on that and you scroll down, you'll see it'll it'll bring it here it'll put it at the very bottom and then you click on that and all these are available after you have done that then you can get rid of that little window and then go back up here to shapes and you'll see now I have legacy shapes and more on here a second time um, and then I'll just click that drop down menu and I will find 2019 shapes I mean this these are really nested all these in here there's all sorts of these it's not the best organization of this but uh, the more you use it the more you'll kind of become familiar with it but the animals and stuff I want to use are in these 2019 shapes there's people there's farm animals aquatic animals wouldn't really make sense to have an animal crossing sign if it's uh, aquatic really or flying for that matter but all sorts of fun things you can do here dinosaurs yeah, I just thought I would go with this. Um, and these are pretty small to look at, and I'm definitely not ever going to be mistaken as an archaeologist. But if I find this one here, it looks kind of like a Velociraptor, uh, shape 404. So I'll click on that. And if I hold down Shift and click and drag, I have, ooh, see that? I didn't create a new layer, so it's actually adding it onto the shape. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to control Z, teachable moment. I'm going to control Z to get rid of that. And I want to make a new layer. So down here in the layers panel in the bottom right hand corner, I'll click this little square with a plus in it. When I move my mouse over it, it usually, there it goes, it says create new layer. That's how you know what it is. I'll click on that, and it makes a new layer here. So each item can be on its own layer which is a good thing because if I make changes or erase something on one layer I don't affect anything else in the picture it's pretty awesome okay so take two drawing a dinosaur take two coming up here to the top to the shapes making sure you have the right dinosaur selected and holding shift and clicking and dragging and now uh, it has just this solid dinosaur here some of the shapes are, are better than others on Adobe. You know, it's just, they're free to use, though, so you can't really, beggars can't be choosers. But I, this is certainly better than what I would be able to draw. Okay, so um, got the dinosaur there. That looks pretty good, pretty centered. And then finally, and I'm not going to put a stroke around the outside of that or anything. I think it looks pretty good. I can now go to my type tool, horizontal type tool, and doesn't really matter where we type this for right now I'm just gonna kind of type it on the side you just want to try not to type this on the edge of a shape because if you do that it'll start going around the shape and that'll be another tutorial video at another time also so for right now I'm just gonna click down here in the corner where I don't have anything and ooh, that was pretty big uh, so I'll move it over here and then if I want to edit that text and I clicked out of it I can just go over here and double click on this T on this lorem ipsum font layer and I will type in Velociraptor crossing. All right, and if I have you can click and highlight this text and and center it or whatever however you want that to be. And then if if yours is much smaller or much larger than mine, if it's if it's not fitting in there, just go up here to your move tool and control T and treat your text in this case just like you would a shape. Um, I don't have to hold shift here. It'll keep it scaled. Uh, with text, you definitely want to resize your text scaled. You don't want it looking like this or like this. That's that's amateur hour right there and it looks like garbage so don't do that uh, and then we'll kind of move this to where 
it fits nicely in here. I want to give it a little bit more space around the edges. Uh, just, you know, so it's kind of evenly done. And maybe as long as it's, it doesn't have to be exact in this case, we're just playing around with this, but the space between the corners here is about the same as here, in between there, in between there, in between there. I think that looks good. And there you have it. So this is our sign, our Velociraptor crossing. Now, let's say we want to save this. Okay, so you would go to File, and you'd go to Save As. You have a couple different options here. You can save it on your computer, which it'll ask you where you want to save it, or you can save it up here to the cloud, uh, where, and it'll just be saved in your Adobe Creative Cloud. Pros and cons to each way. doesn't hurt to have it saved in two different places. Um, the cloud is obviously nice because then you can edit it anywhere where you can have access to the Creative Cloud. But let's say something happens to it there. You know, I've, I've never had that happen, but let's say something does. Uh, some, as with anything in technology, bad things can happen. Um, if it's also saved on your computer, you know, you have a nice backup copy. You would save it as a PSD file. All right, I'm not going to save this particular one. A uh, PSD file will allow you to go back in and like, oops, I misspelled Velociraptor. Uh, or whatever the case may be. Um, you can change anything uh, that you need to. And you can edit it, you know, and it works. And you can bring in that PSD file to, to other Adobe products and use that in there. Uh, but if you are creating this and you want it uh, saved someplace... Uh, like if you want to turn it into a phone wallpaper or put this on a website or post it on social media or something like that or, or print it on a shirt, whatever, um, then you also are going to need to save it as a graphic file also. Um, in, the, in that case, you want to think, do I want there to be a white square around the outside of the shape or is there going to be something showing up behind it? Like if I'm going to have this eventually, if I'm going to upload it and have it printed onto a shirt, and let's say the shirt is black, it's going to look weird if I have a black shirt with a white square with the yellow sign in there. You know, it's going to look kind of weird. If I put this on a website, and if the background of the website isn't white, you're going to see this white square. So to fix that, you just click the little eyeball here uh, to the background right there. And it, you'll see it now it's this checkered stuff. This checkered stuff is Photoshop language for transparent. And it means that there will be nothing around this. Okay, now, once you have that done, then you would go to File and you would save a copy. So most of the time you have a project, you're going to have it saved as two different ways. As a PSD, but then when you go to Save As, but then you're also going to go to Save a Copy. And then you can go here to on your computer. And let's say I go on here to on your computer and I have this in here. Uh, I'm going to drop this drop down menu and I'm going to select a dot PNG. You can see I have some other projects going on here too for class. And then I could go dinosaur sign. And then I would click Save. And that PNG file is going to preserve the transparency. So no matter where this design goes digitally or wherever, uh, there's not going to be a white square. If I saved it as a JPEG, it's automatically going to fill that transparency uh, with white again or another defined color, which you don't want. So remember, save your stuff as a PSD and then also save your file as a PNG. Um, when you save it as a PNG, that file can not be edited on the individual layers in Photoshop. So that's why you want both. But there you have it. A simple sign we talked getting started with Photoshop, uh, how to bring in a shape, adjusting the fill and the stroke, adding a layer style stroke around the outside, importing a custom shape uh, from their library, and adding some text. I think that's enough to get anyone dangerous with this and, and to start having fun and you know playing around and experimenting with Adobe Photoshop. 
I hope this was helpful for those who asked. Let me know what you think in the comments or shoot me a message. And as always, we'll catch you on the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.